Hello and welcome to What Now? Conversations for real life with real people in real time. We promise. We promise. Brother Jake just said that today's episode was going to be phenomenal. That's right. It's going to be colossal. <laughs> Huge. Huge. Massive. Massive. It's going to be the best ever. I believe so. Best day ever. That was on Rapunzel, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it's SpongeBob. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm Jonathan Barker, along with Jonathan Bass and Jake Easter. We're your host of the podcast today, and we say thank you for taking out time to listen, um, whether it's this morning or tonight or this afternoon or in the middle of the night. Um, whenever it is, thank you for taking out time to listen to the podcast today. And uh, I've not been here. I know it. We've missed you. I took a leave of That's absence. Right. I guess for a month now. About a month, yeah. It's been a About month. month. Yeah. Wow. Have y'all missed me? We have. Yep. yep. Sure have. We even talked about it a couple times. Brother Jonathan's trying to multitask. He is, yes. And that it. other computer he's working <laughs> on up there. Yeah. Ain't no telling what's going to be on it whenever no. I try to work on There's it after a while. I'm, I'm trying to produce, be part of the conversation, yeah. and do some IT work at the same time. So. Uh, uh, productive. That's right. Multitask. You right. know that i done a study on multitasking. Have you ever done a study on multitasking? They no. say that it is it is proven to be impossible to multitask and be productive at it. Hmm. That one of the two things will suffer. Yeah. In other words, if you're oh, working true. Yeah. on recording a podcast and right. doing IT work, <laughs> one of them's gonna suffer. One of them's gonna suffer. Your computer may not be any good after it probably won't after be. this episode. But that's the truth. <laughs> I done I done a study on that. Well, that's, really that's where that old saying, you know, the a jack of all trades but master of none yep. comes from, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You can do a lot of th- you can do a lot of things halfway good, or you can do one thing really good. Yeah, yeah you know? or really bad, or really well. <laughs> as long as you give it your all, right? <laughs> so, what are you reading right now besides your Bible? I am. Um, I've been reading. Oh, um, what was that book you recommend? Must be a good I, I, book. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I had I had not picked it God's up. Gods at War. Kyle Gods Ottoman. at War from Kyle Ottoman. Yeah, it, it left me there. I've been trying to work through that, but I've not read any in it this week. But um, I, I get audible. So a lot of times when you I'm listen. not, lo- I'm listening to it. And when I'm not looking at it, I forget sometimes yeah. the details on it. But uh, that's what I've been doing, um, which, like I said, I've been slack this week. I've been in the Bible a whole lot more this week, just trying to get some study and caught up for the weekend. And so um haven't been doing a lot of extra I guess you could say extra reading. So. What are you reading, Brother Jake? I actually come across, I had had a volume from the Sword of the Lord on um, great preaching on soul winning, and I didn't realize that that was part of a, of a series or volumes, and so I actually added to my uh, collection, and I've been reading and studying some of the old sermons on salvation uh, is what I've been reading. And it's a little bit of a change for me to, to uh, go to reading these sermons um, because I'm normally reading. I just uh, a couple of weeks ago finished The Gods at War, Kyle Eidemann, and uh, I've had several other books that I've read. I try every year, the first of the year, I read Brother Chapels on spiritual leadership. Yeah. Um, then Brother Kenny Kuykendall, he's got some good books on, on uh, for the preacher, the private life. Of the preacher. Oh, yeah. Preaching and, 101. And some of those things, Preaching 101. I try to every year at the start of the year read through those, and we've done that. But that, uh, I've actually transitioned into this sort of the Lord, reading these sermons from these older men of God, Oliver B. Green, Harold Seitler. Um, read one just last night and um, from Curtis Hudson. It's just a blessing to. Um, to to hear these men and of course Mm -hmm. in reading in reading these messages it's just a great reflection on not only a devotional um, studying more about salvation but then to see the mannerisms of these men and and, um, how they delivered their messages well good deal have you got jack treber's book dr treber's book on leadership I don't think I do. He's got a good one on oh, leadership. Awesome. It kind of goes through the book of Nehemiah, yeah. those first six or seven chapters I'll of have Nehemiah. I into getting that. Yeah, it's really good. Well, you want to know what I'm reading right now? What you reading? Well, I'm reading my Bible. Yeah. And um, besides my Bible. <laughs> he said in addition to our Bible. Like he did say that while ago. <laughs> and besides my Bible, we're doing a 40-day challenge here at the church. Um, from Brother Kenny Kuykendall's oh, prayer yeah. journal, his 40-day mm-hmm. prayer That's journal. Good. That's so awesome. we bought everybody at the church that wanted one of them. Um, we bought 
we bought them all one from the church. That's a blessing. And uh, give it to them. And we're going through it. And uh, yesterday was Jonah. And while I was preaching last night, I mentioned it. Uh, You know, I'm enjoying my prayer journal. And you could see a lot of faces, a lot of, you know, a lot of times Mm -hmm. you can tell just by body language if people's into it. And um, I saw a lot of faces light up. And then I said Jonah. And there was probably 80% of the congregation shook their head. Yeah. So we're doing it right now. Right now, but then I'm also reading a book. This is nothing spiritual. I'm reading a book called Eat That Frog. Have you ever read that? Never heard no, of it. I don't never believe heard you it. You ought to read it. It's really good. Um, my good friend, Brother John White, Pastor's Freedom, he recommended it to me. Um, on Sunday night, we uh, had went there because we didn't have service here, um, and which this is Aaron on Monday, so it was a week ago last night. I was, we're recording on Thursday. But anyway, uh, Brother John was telling me about it, and it's dealing with time management and procrastination. And, man, I'm telling you, it's tremendous. It really is. Um, it's really helped me, and, and I'm probably – Uh, I'll probably finish it this week. I just started it Monday, um, but I'll probably finish it this week. What was the title again? Eat That Frog. Eat That Frog. I'm going to look into that. Sounds interesting. That's what our last episode was about. about. (laughs) Procrastination. Eat frogs? No, No. procrastination. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like they'd go hand in hand, though. Yeah, Yeah, but um, (laughs) it's a good book. Well, let's get into today's podcast. And uh, we're going to start today and go for the next several episodes um, and deal with some things. Um, today we're going to deal with how to be a help to your preacher or to your pastor. And then um, we're going to spin off of that um, and deal with some things as far as um, the challenges of, of pastoring in a rural area. All three of us pastor in a rural area. Um, all three of us also have been bivocational. Brother Jonathan still bivocational. Um, Brother Jake and I are privileged to be full-time in our churches now. But um, the challenges of being bivocational, um, time management in with that with preachers Um, and uh, we've had a a young preacher ask us some things about studying Um, so we're going to take the next several episodes and we're going to talk about some of those things but let's start today with how to be a help to your pastor you know I was thinking about this you're one of two things to your pastor. You're either a help or a hindrance. Right. That's right. One of the two. There's no in between on that. You're yeah. either helping him exactly right. or you're a hindrance to him. Yeah. And um do you know, as a as a member of a church and and even if you're not a member, but you go to that church faithfully and give to that church, um, your your desire and your prayer should be to be a help to your pastor right. mm-hmm. um, and and um, to, to be there for him. So I'll start off with this one. First of all, I would say if you want to be a help to your pastor, number one, uh, number one and number two, they really go hand in hand together. You need to pray for him and you need to be faithful. That's yeah. exactly right. Absolutely. I, I tell our people all the time, the greatest blessing, and our church is good to me. They take care of our family financially. You know, I, honestly, I don't have to want for anything. Our church is very good to us. But um, uh, the greatest thing that you can ever do for your pastor is to be faithful and to pray for him. And if you pray for him the way you should, you'll be faithful yeah. to the house of God That's the way true. you should. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, I always heard it said, <clears throat> I always heard it said when I was growing up, you know, every time that you stayed at home, didn't come to church and just got lazy and laid out, you know, that's a vote to close the door to the church. And, and, you know, as I pastor and, and as I get older, that is, that is the absolute truth. And, but, you know, here's what I think about when I'm, I'm thinking about how helpful it is for your pastor. If you just show up, here's the thing. And people don't realize this and you just decide to stay at home. You know, here's what here's what's going through the pastor's mind when he gets up and he sees that empty empty pew. He's he's instantly wondering, is something wrong? That's right. I wonder if they're okay. Did they get mad? Are they coming back? And and you sitting at home and and the added because I've been there. I know how it. You said, well, I ain't got to go to every single service and I ain't got to do this. And I, and then a lot of people's like, well, I ain't got to tell the pastor where I'm going either. You know, I ain't got to tell him nothing, but you don't understand in that situation, how bad that can hinder that service. And you're sitting home thinking you ain't bothering nobody. But when a pastor, you know, the Bible tells us that we're 
overseers of the flock. That goes more than just standing up and preaching. That means we care for our people. That's right. And when they're not there, we instantly start wondering what's going on with them. Yeah. Wonder what's happening. And uh, it really messes with you. And well, it goes hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 10, 25, the faithfulness, he said, not forsaken the mm-hmm. assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. And a lot of times that's emphasized, but don't leave off the latter part of that verse. He said, but mm-hmm. exhorting one another sure. and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So there's that, that level of exhortation that by just your presence, you being in your place where you're supposed to be, that's an encouragement to yes, your sir. pastor. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, you can't exhort if you ain't there. Exactly. That's... And, you know, I understand that you're not going to make it to every service. Right. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. There's sure. going to be times that you're sick. There's going to be times that, you know, you go on vacation. Right. Um, I, I don't think that you need to miss, you know, two Sundays a month on vacation. Right. That's right, brother. You know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? That's, mm-hmm. that. um, yeah. that, that's not right. It's not that's right. right. Um, but there's going to be times like that. Um, but, you know, for the, four, uh, for, the, for the most part, you should be faithful to the house of sure. God. Absolutely. And um, it, uh, one of our challenges, you know, this past Sunday, or I, we're recording on Thursday. i, I got to keep that in my mind. Um, you're listening on Monday. So a week ago, you're Easter Sunday. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Easter Sunday was our first, you know, our first official service in our new sanctuary. We've got it done now. And um, um, one of the challenges that I saw Sunday, um, Easter Sunday, and I saw this past Wednesday night, was finding where everybody's sitting at now. Yeah. Um, because, mm-hmm. you know, when you, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying, <laughs> oh, yeah. in your building, you know where everybody's at. That's right. right. So, you know, if there's a hole there, you know exactly who's out. So, That's right. um, it's learning now where, where is everybody? You know, Sunday, you you uh, Easter, up. Sunday morning, <laughs> I was looking for my wife yeah. and, you know, I needed to tell her something. And I was like, where in the world is Leslie at <laughs> in the midst of all these people? And then I was talking about Aaron and Bethany. They're, they're over our small kids and, um, they're doing our Easter celebration, our Easter egg hunt. Um, some will condemn us for that. But anyway, they're doing our Easter egg hunt. And um, uh, I was like, where's Aaron and Bethany? Has anybody seen Aaron and Bethany today? They were sitting on the front row, man. That's they was funny. waving at me sitting on the front row. And I was That's looking funny. right over top of them. But yeah. faithfulness is so important. And, right. and here's one thing um, with, with we have the way we are set up at our church. We have deacons. We have trustees. We have three deacons and three um active trustees and then of course our sunday school teachers and um um, our awana teachers and um then our youth church workers um which aaron and bethany is over the six to eleven and then hannah and gavin's over the three four and five year olds but anyway we it's kindly uh, and you can't make it like a a, um uh we're going to fire you if you don't do this. You right. know, I think there's got to be a balance in pastoring um, between pastoring and lordship. But we, you know, if they're not going to be here, they're supposed to let us know. Right. And if they don't, man, I reach out to them as soon as service is over and say, hey, I missed you today. Yeah. It's important that when your kids walk up to me or somebody from your class walks up to me and says, hey, where's Jonathan at today? He was mm-hmm. my teacher. And he said for me to come to church and he's not here. Yeah. It's important that you're able to let them know that. That. So right. I right. would say be faithful and pray for them. Then <clears throat> I would say this. When it comes to being a help to your preacher, um, do not. <laughs> I, I can't emphasize that do not enough right there. Do not ever go up to him right before service starts <laughs> and start talking to him about a problem. Yep. Right. Uh, just, That's right. Just don't, just don't do it. Or yeah. when the choir's coming down. Yep. You know, somebody, have y'all ever had to have somebody yeah. hit you up and, uh, you know what, we need to talk about this and we need to deal. Well, you know what, mm-hmm. man, we've had six days. <laughs> right. We've You're had right. Monday, Tuesday, yep. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Why yeah. didn't you come to me then? Right. right. Um, and that is just such a hindrance. If if people could, and I don't mean this like rudely, I'm just being transparent. If people could only understand 
the load that right. he's on a pastor, right. whether he's pastoring 20 people right. or whether he's pastoring 250 people or whether he's pastoring 2,000 people, mm-hmm. the load that is on that preacher on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, they yeah. cannot even enter into it. And, um, I, I, man, don't ever go up to your preacher and, and you know, if you want to walk up to him and say, hey, Man, I love you. I'm praying for you today. Let her rip, preacher. Yeah. Um, or like Brother Jonathan's guy did Sunday, I'm expecting when you open your mouth, the fire of God to come That's out. That's it. Exactly. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, those are encouraging it. things. Word of encouragement. But yeah. to, to just go up to him and, and you know, and, and, and boy, I'm going to take it a step further and get crucified right here. You don't need to give him prayer requests at the beginning of service. Right. There's right. six days yeah. in a week, right. you know, yeah. that's leading into Sunday and that's leading into Wednesday also, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, your preacher, your pastor, no doubt he has a telephone, right? He can text, mm-hmm. he has email, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. And as far as that goes, he has a, a, some, uh, I know not all uh, are, are here, but some has a secretary that you can go to and say, hey, can you add this to the prayer list? Right. And um, it, it just be respectful of them. I'll let y'all jump in there. I know I talked a lot right there, and I'm going to say some more about that in just a minute. Well, I think that's very mm-hmm. important. I mean, when you're uh, doing what the Lord's called you to do, and, and as a pastor, you're you're heart's desires to feed the flock and when you get up and and your mind is geared on what god has given you to say the last thing you need is a distraction uh, from somebody else's week you know it's it's one thing if they want to come in the house of god um with that distraction um you know something they're carrying and and it may even be a, a, a important need but i will say this if it is of extreme importance i agree 100 percent. it could have been shared before Sunday morning in between the Mm -hmm. choir and the preacher preaching you know there's there's ample time for you to get get that to the preacher and uh, I would say uh, when it comes to to issues as in terms of prior requests and problems um, reach out to your pastor through the week you know we're here we're here we want to pray for you we want to we want to minister to you I don't know if you you've ever had this happen I'm sure both of you have Uh, one of the things that really burdens me in the ministry sometimes um, is to not learn of a need and um, in terms of until um, Sunday morning, Sunday night or Wednesday night and you find out you know, the worst thing that, that you could experience on Sunday morning getting ready to preach, somebody come up to you and say um, well did you realize such and such been in the hospital this week? Well, Didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. So yep. now my mind is, okay, I could have went and visited this person this week, and now I'm I'm tracking off of the message that God has for That's me right. to preach. And then I'm thinking, well, how many people could have let me know That's this right. week that they and were in the hospital? And then you're thinking, is that individual upset because they've not heard right. from me are as they their upset? pastor? How is their condition? This morning I'm getting up to preach. How are they doing? Yep. So it's That's just right. understanding the, the call that God's put on our life and, and the desire we have to preach the word of God and feed the flock, but then to love our people. You know, we want to be there. We want to be present. Um, but I agree 100% Sunday morning, uh, Sunday night and Wednesday night, right before service, leading up into the service, in between the singing and the preaching. Uh, don't distract your preacher with, yeah, with things right. unless it's a word of encouragement. And, and, uh, and, you know, if you're walking in the church door and you get a phone call, oh, absolutely, that oh, yeah. your daddy just got rushed to the hospital or your child just got rushed, that's that's a completely different. different. That's, yes, an emergency that's, a, that's an emergency situation. Yeah. You say, well, that person's in the hospital. If they've been in there more than twelve hours, yeah, I should have already got a call. Right, sure. You know, it. You know, mm-hmm. if they if they went in on Thursday, it's Sunday morning at eleven fifteen, and the choir's coming down. Yeah. That's no longer an emergency. Right. The emergency right. was Thursday when they right. went in the hospital. Yeah. But um, I, I think it's important. It you is. know, I, I have, um, and even, you know, and, and, and I don't mean this, I don't mean this ugly. People don't know unless you say it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even hitting your preacher up as soon as service is over yeah. with 42 questions. Right. Man, when service is over, I am drained, yeah. especially Sunday night. Right. Sunday oh, yeah. night, man, yeah. I'm drained. I'm done physically, out. mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. spiritually. Yeah. You know, you give out, you give out, you give out. 
I am drained. And and if you hit me up on Sunday night after service and tell me several things, I'm not going to remember it. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. I go home, I eat my eggs and my French fries, and I sit down in my recliner, and usually I wake up about 1 o'clock in the morning and go get in my bed. I'm yeah. just killed. Mm-hmm. So I think even coming to him after a service. Yeah. And, and hitting him up. I say this last night, um, uh, Briscotti, which is Jake's brother, he's over at Iwana's, and uh, he come up to me and he said, Preacher, he said, are you busy tomorrow night? And I said, yes, sir. I said, i got to preach in Walnut Cove. And he said, well, what about Friday night? And I said, I'll be at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church in a youth meeting. And he said, well, what about Saturday? And I said, well, I'll be driving back. I'll be yeah. there Saturday morning, then I'll be driving back Saturday evening. And uh, I said, what have you got? Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of youth outings. And I said, okay. I said, well, i tell you what. And, and I don't, I, I will not set up meetings on Sundays like with couples to talk to them about problems, sure. anything to do with the problem. I'm not going to talk about it on a Sunday. Right. I, don't, I don't meet with people on Sundays. Um, that's just, that's a rule that I have, right. you know, because I'm so give out. Yeah. I'm probably going to say something I don't need to say. So I told Brother Scotty, I said, well, Sunday afternoon, 5 o'clock, meet yeah. me in a small conference room, and we'll sit down and talk about it. Right. And he said, sounds great. And, you know, you as pastors understand what I'm saying right here. That meant the world to me that he just didn't walk up to me and, and unload on me. That's right. right. Yep. Yeah. You know, he said, hey, when can I set up a time right. to sit down and talk? And And I'll say this. That shows some spiritual maturity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? True. Um, And it also shows leadership maturity. Right. Um, Scotty's in a very dominant role in his job. You know, he, he's he's a dominant leader in his work environment, and he understands that. Right. And, um, I, I, you know, set up that time with your preacher. Right. If you want to yeah. talk to him, set up a time with him. Go to him. Go to his secretary and say, hey, when can I get on the preacher's calendar? When can I sit down and talk to him? Yeah. Now, Understand if it is an emergent situation, right. that's different. It is. But the biggest part of the things, yeah, you can set up a time and go sit down and talk to him. And I think everybody knows this, but I think sometimes uh, people uh, easily forget. Um, you you got to remember that uh, the man of God, the pastor, um, he has a family. Um, That's right. And, you know, when you think about your life, you think about your work schedule, you think about your family and how you have to prioritize things in order to accomplish everything, having that balance between your work and family. Understand the pastor, when he's fulfilling his role as a pastor, there's a lot that happens throughout his week. And so um, it's not, and this may be another episode within itself, but it's not just an hour on Sunday, an hour on Sunday night, and, and you know, Wednesday night an hour. You know, there's, there's sermon preparation, there's there's times that we pray those needs those requests you give us we spend time praying over those and um, so when we talk about you know prioritizing when you come to him um, hey when can I meet with you um, it's it's just understanding being respectful of his time as you would want somebody to be That's respectful right. of yours and that Sunday and and I know y'all might can chime in here but here's a normal Sunday for me before daylight I'm up yeah I'm um, um, getting ready to go to church, and then as soon as I'm done getting ready, I'm at the church. Uh, I'm a, a lot of times I'm at the church before ninety percent of our members ever even get out of the bed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm at the church, and I'm in my office. I'm studying. I'm getting my mind geared in towards the message Sunday morning. I'm looking over Sunday nights too, right. but I'm really getting centered in towards Sunday morning. I'm going through the announcements. Um, that has been put on my desk, um, or you know, we run we run Apple computers, so um, the announcements that's been put into my notes that is shared with those that can edit it. I'm looking at our announcements. I'm looking at our prayer requests. Um, I'm praying. I, I'm trying to go to every one of our Sunday school classes and pray for our Sunday school teachers. Call those teachers' names out to the Lord in their classes. Um, I, I try to go by every pew or now seat, yeah. um, every row of seats, and pray that God fills them up and that if there's somebody lost sitting on them, that God saves them. Um, you know, I'm standing behind the pulpit 
Yeah. And mm-hmm. envisioning who's going to be sitting there and where they're going to be sitting and, and praying that God helps me as I stand in that place. And then it's back in the office, you know, and um, then our buses or our vans are leaving out around 830 or 9 o'clock, you know, talking to them a minute. And then by 10 o'clock, Sunday school classes are kicking off and I'm running by every, I go by every Sunday school, our youth, I don't go to all the adult classes, but all of our youth Sunday school classes, I go by every one of them on Sunday morning and talk to the teachers. I talk to the kids and then I'm back in my office and I taught up. I, I've just stopped that now. I've, I finished the new convert class I was doing. I'm back in my office and I'm, I'm refreshing my mind on, on what I'm going to preach that morning and my announcements for that morning. And then at 1030, the door's going to close and it's prayer time. Yeah. And then about 15 minutes till 11, I come out of my office. I'll go to the sanctuary and start greeting the people. I preach. I go back to the office after I preach and I study until Leslie calls me and says, lunch is done. I go home. I eat lunch. I come right back to the office and it's usually about 9, 930 that night before I get back home. Yeah. So the preacher has a lot on him on a Sunday. He does. That a lot of people don't understand. Exactly. But Jonathan, he chime does. in, man. You've yeah. been quiet. Well, I've just been listening. <laughs> just been listening. I'm making up for um, my, my four-week leave, man. <laughs> That's funny. And no, I mean, everything, everything is spot on. Uh, another thing I do have, there's a... I've got a couple of things pulled up here I was thinking about, but, um, you know, you want to help your pastor, then get behind him. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, these things that he's trying to do, these, these activities he's trying to push, these ministries he's trying to push, he needs faithful workers to help Absolutely. him. Absolutely. You want to help your pastor get in there and serve faithfully. Find something in your church that you can do. I told my people the other day, I said, I said, all you might be able to do is sit at home, write out a card, and put it in the mail. And if that's all you can do, do it. Do it. It'll that's help exactly us. Right. It helps the love grow, the unity grow inside right. the church. You know, if you know one member over here is is suffering with something or hurting with something, put a card in the mail and say, "Hey, I'm praying for you." I said, "Just whatever you can do, do it, and that's and right. do it faithfully." Yeah. And uh, man, that helps a pastor. And then. Um, you know, this one right here, your pastor has a vision for the church. Your pastor has, I mean, it, it, the Bible says it plainly, where there is no vision, the people perish. The people perish. And, and that's true in, I mean, that's, yes, it's so true. And so when your pastor, you know, when he spends his time studying, when he spends, you know, spends his time figuring up, you know, what God has given him for the year and that vision, get behind him and allow your vision to match his vision and go on for the glory yeah. of God. Just yeah. support him. Anything yeah. you can do to make his life easier. Yeah. And um, because like Brother Jonathan, you said a while ago, people have no idea what the pastor is dealing with. Just the spiritual load alone throughout the week and, and studying for those messages. You know, um, I was telling my people last night, you know, I study sometimes you can get a message ready in a couple of hours and other times it's 20 hours and and then you come in and you give it all you got and people don't even act like they listen to it yeah you know say and, man whether you like it or not yeah I was like just you back know? him up you know if if you ain't getting a thing out of it which you ought to be you know we all do I had you know I, I told him about Wednesday nights I, I you know just tired and wore out and wasn't a, any more spiritual than an old tree stump outside, you know. But I'd come into church here because I knew God would have something for me. Yeah. And I said, the preacher may have got up and preached on John three sixteen. Man, I've been saved since I was eight years old. But I walked away with something encouraging That's from right. him. And uh, I said, if you just come in and be ready and, um, you know, pray. Read the Bible. Pray right. for your pastor. Pray. Try to prepare for the service before you come in. Look for ways you can help. That's right. And you know, praying, praying for your pastor. I was saying about this when we were on the subject of prayer earlier, prayer and faithfulness. Um, you know, a lot of times people come and they'll have their request. 
Um, when's the last time you went to your pastor and said, hey, preacher, pastor, uh, what is something I can specifically pray for you yeah. and your family concerned? Yeah, that's good. Uh, mm-hmm. Turn that around. Instead of taking always taking your request to the preacher, maybe yeah. go to the preacher because a lot of times we don't share. We, we, have, we have one or two friends that we can confide mm-hmm. in, so a lot of times outside of the church, and yeah. um, for, for, you know, the right reasons. Um, but... Um, to to go to him and say, is there one thing that I can help you pray about? And right. uh, that within itself would be a b- big yeah. encouragement and help I, because he's got his family, um, yep. you know, just as you have your That's family. Right. So there's needs he has there. There might be physical needs. There might be spiritual needs. Um, so there's a lot when we talk about praying for your pastor. You could learn from him That's right. uh, by just asking him, how can I help you pray about something? I'll, sure. I'll tell you two more and I'll be done here, but... Here's another good way to help you, Pastor. Go out in the community and share Christ and share your church with people. That's exactly right. Tell people what's going on at your church. Tell yeah. people about your pastor and how he preaches and what he yeah. preaches. And, and um, I mean, I ain't saying that to make it go to his head, but it's for the glory of God. That's right. And right. doing that, people, and it's biblical. if you're excited, it's biblical. If you're excited about your pastor and you're excited about your church, then somebody else will get excited about that's it right. too. And uh, that's exactly right. Luke fourteen twenty three is the biblical. Yeah, and the Lord yeah. said unto the servant, go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Yeah. I tell you what, me and Brother Matt, I remember when, we, when I was still here at the church at AGBC, we... Um, we were going out for uh, Sunday school. Uh, we were visiting some Sunday school people, and uh, one Saturday, and and uh, he said, "You think we ought to go out and get some candy and get some money or something?" And I said, "Well, whatever works." He said, "Well, that verse says, go out. It, it says to compel them. It didn't say with what." He said, yeah. "We'll compel them with cash and candy." Yeah, and that's get right. Them in. So, that's but funny. Uh, but here's another thing. Here's another thing I see a whole lot. If you want to help your pastor out, keep a positive spirit. That's right. Yeah, just. Be positive. That's right. Be, be encouraging. It encourages him. You know, if he walks in the doors of the church every time and it's already been talked about, all you're doing is unloading stuff on him. And and I know that's part of being a pastor. But at some point, people, you know, you people ought to have some victory in their life, too. Right. You know, yeah. and uh, I get. And uh, let him know. Uh, that's another thing with prior requests. Something good happens in your week. I yes. had a lady. uh there at the church, she called me. She said, Preacher, I just want to let you know that what you preach Wednesday night, I've been looking over today. This mm-hmm. was on a Friday. And she yeah. said, I'm just getting a blessing just yeah. going back over oh, your yes. Don't always share the bad things. Share some of the good things, too. That's right. There is, yep. there is, that's like putting jet fuel on a fire it right is. there for a pastor. Absolutely. I mean, to know, to see your people growing, to see somebody involved and, in, 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 you know, just enthusiastic and positive about right. it. Man, that just uh, I can't I can't express the level of encouragement that gives me as a pastor, right? And I know it does y'all too. Sure. And so, um, yeah. And I'd say this in in closing: be understanding of his schedule. Yes. Be yeah. understand. You know, a lot of times people call the preacher, and if he don't answer immediately, they're like, "Oh, why didn't he answer?" Mm-hmm. If he don't text back immediately. Understand the preacher has a life too, right? And um, you know, I've got any more where um, I've set the focus up on my phone, um, and I'm sure oh, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. It's wonderful, and yeah, and I can I can receive calls from my deacons um, and my trustees. Um, it's who I've got it set up to receive calls. Of course, my family, you know, my wife and my girls, and then with my position in the county, I've got it where I can get calls from the administrative staff at the sheriff's office or from CECOM. And um, there's a lot of times anymore now, um, you know, and I'm just getting back into the routine of a, a, a daily pastor's life instead of a general contractor where we built this building and I overseen it all. But there's if I'm in my office study, and that's what I do, is yeah. I turn that focus on. Yep. And you know what? Be understanding of it. And when the preacher, when you call the preacher and say, hey, I need to come talk to you right now, understand he's got a schedule. Yep. And he may not can talk to you right now. Now, if it's an emergent situation, somebody's dying, that's one thing. Sure. But understand when your preacher says, well, if you'll contact my secretary, she'll give you a time. Or if he says, hey, let me text you with a couple of times that I have available over the next few days. And, um, you know, I, I don't and, – and I guess 
I'm just getting old and setting my ways. <laughs> um, I don't meet with people near as much in the evenings as, as I used to. Um, and here's the reason for that. I've got kids at home, too. Right. I've got a family right. at home, too. Yeah. And, you know, what you can change your schedule to meet with other people during the day. Yeah. You should be willing to change your schedule to meet with your pastor during the day. Right. And be understanding to his schedule. So, well, man... Um, if I was a church member and not a pastor, I'd call my pastor right now and say, hey, what can I help you pray about? What can I do for you? Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I hope you've got a little bit out of it today. Next week, we're going to start talking about what we're talking about next week. Oh, the challenges of facing uh, or the challenges of pastoring in a rural area. Um, and we're going to talk to the pastor some. And I, now, if you're not a pastor, I hope you'll listen, because if you go to a church in a rural area, you're going to hear more ways to help your pastor. So, um, but the challenges of that, you know, a lot of people, and I'm going to hush because we'll talk about this next week. A lot of pastors don't understand that. No. They, they really don't. They've never faced the challenges of it. So we're going to talk about that. And um, thank you so much for listening today to What Now? Conversations for Life.